welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica, and today we are gonna be taking a tour of my sewing room. I recently rearranged it. I've had a lot of people asking for a new video tour, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. I will also tell you where everything in the room came from. Pretty much all of it's from Ikea, so it'd be pretty easy for you to find. Um, and I will also be doing a detailed information on my sewing table. I get a lot of questions on how I have that set up. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So we're gonna start on this wall over here as you come through my door. Um, because the birds are in here and they live in this corner but they're very loud, so I'm gonna be taking them out for this video. But as you can see, they're in that little corner there. They hop up on there. Their cage is always open. They just kind of fly around and enjoy the space. And yes, Bandit the Borgie is still down below them hoping one day to snag a bird. Um, that's kind of his sleeping spot also. He just kind of hangs out there. Inside those cabinets are all of my quilting books and patterns. So as you can see on this wall, now that we've gotten rid of the birds, we've got this fun Ikea pegboard. And this stuff is great. It comes with a variety of different items that you can put into the pegboard so you can hang different things on it, which I love. As you can see, I have some fun stuff, all of my rulers. And then down here at the bottom, I've got my Cricut uh, weaving loom. It keeps it off the floor and it keeps jacks out of it. So that is really nice and handy as well. I have two boards on here and these are both their larger size. So opposite my bird, I have my sewing table and my large fabric wall back there. All of these are from Ikea. I will link everything below. And my sewing machine is a Juki TL2000, which I absolutely love. Now underneath my sewing table, you can see that I have quite a few legs holding it up. This is actually two panels and you can see the split right here. They're being held together by that circular leg mount and that came from Ikea. And instead of placing it, you can see those holes right there where it should have been. I actually centered it in between both of these legs and then I did another one over there um, on the far edge as well. I also put one right here in the center to give it a little bit extra stability and then there's one on each of the four corners. So there is a total of eight legs holding up this table. It gives it a lot of extra support. It keeps these two separate tabletops together, like I mentioned. Uh, that way they don't slide apart when I'm sewing, and it just makes for a nice, really sturdy table. And I will link, like I said, all of this below. Like I mentioned, I have a Juki TL2000. I absolutely love this machine. It comes with this little um, table. It also comes with this regular uh, quarter inch foot. It's not a quarter inch foot, but that's what I use it for. It's really darn close. And it also comes with a walking foot, so it is definitely meant for quilting. It is a straight stitch only machine, so it's for sure a quilter's kind of type of machine, uh, but it's very industrial. It can handle very thick fabrics, and I absolutely love it. And then down here, I've got my mat and thread catcher. Both are tutorials on my website. Moving on from my sewing machine, I keep all of my little supplies right here on my window ledge. This is a bin from Ikea, and then these are the magnetic pin bowls. Um, you can get these from Riley Blake, and then these are the little mini stash and stores from Fat Quarter Shop. I absolutely love those. I keep all of my supplies in them. Super cute. And then this was just um, a box from Fat Quarter Shop and the little thread catcher that I got from one of my boxes. Moving on from my sewing machine, I've got my beautiful wall of fabric back there. That larger bin right here is a five by five um, Calyx system from Ikea. I'm not sure they sell the five by five anymore. I think they only do the four by four, but uh, you can check online and see. And then along this top shelf up here, I've got all my bins of scrap fabric, my jelly rolls, and my little, uh, mini charms, some thread, a couple knitting needles, and things like that. I do tend to keep my fabric by designer. So as you can see, they're still bundled up in their fat quarter bundles or fat eighth bundles. I've thought about doing a rainbow wall. I think it would look beautiful. But I also like to keep fabric um, from one line altogether so that if I'm doing a project and I want it all to kind of coordinate without having to do a lot of thought, I can do that. So, so far I haven't done the rainbow wall. What I have done is organized all of my yardage into kind of a rainbow so I can kind of find what I need easily that way. One question I get asked quite a bit is how I store this um, yardage down here. And so they are just folded neatly and placed on these comic book boards. You can get them in a pack of about a hundred of these for about $10, so they're super affordable. They're just a lightweight um, kind of cardboard, I don't know, they're not super thick, but they're enough to help your fabric um, stand up nice and straight. It also makes them easier just to kind of get them in and out of these spaces. So that's how I store those, super easy. And then in these black buckets below my yardage, I've got all of my spinning fiber. I do have to keep those kind of in the buckets and pushed out of the way because Jax likes to attack them. 
And then this little fun corner of my sewing room is obviously my ironing board. I do have a tutorial for this ironing panel down here. It's basically just a nice piece of plywood covered up with some batting and a cute piece of fabric. But I do have a tutorial for you um, if you would like to see that. This is also my new filming location. I really like it a lot. It's got a not lot of nice color and brightness to it. I do get questions on this quilt ladder. This is a quilt ladder I made and I'll try and put instructions in the um, description box below, but it's basically made out of three two by two boards that I got from Home Depot. I um, cut the boards into, uh, you can really make it however wide you want, but the third board I cut into, I think it was about two feet um, little sections. And then the other two, obviously I left. And then I just put a screw right here on each one going down just to hold them in. And then I chalk painted the whole thing and voila, homemade quilt ladder. It's perfect for my little setup. And I actually made one for all of my kids' rooms as well. And of course, I don't want to leave out my fun little thread wall here. This is just being held up by 3M Command Velcro strips. It's held up really well. And there are two of these. They're just the wooden um, thread holders. I got these, I think, at Walmart. And then of course we wouldn't want to leave out my jelly roll rug. This is one of my favorite additions and I really think it brings a lot of brightness and cheer to this sewing space. And then last but not least, we've got my desk area. Of course, I have a ton of minis on my wall up there. Some are some I've made, some are from friends. And then below that, we've got my Ikea desk set up. I did put my monitor in here. I can watch movies on it. I also work in here quite a bit. Down here on the floor, I'm stashing my palms and some yarn. I've got a few projects that I'm writing patterns for right now, right there. I've got a microphone because believe it or not, I'm gonna start podcasting. I have not gotten to it yet, but leave a thumbs up on this video if you want me to start podcasting. And then over here is my yarn wall. This guy is loaded up with all kinds of fun yarns. All right guys, that is it. That is my updated sewing room tour. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. That way I know to keep making fun videos for you guys. Thanks so much for joining me today and I will see you next time.